In this video, I'm going to be talking about beaming or beams, or if you prefer, how to group notes together. Now, there are a lot of rules surrounding what beams are and how they're used. And this video is going to cover the absolute basics for those of you who have not come across beaming before. So first of all, let's clarify what I mean by a beam or beaming. So here are a couple of notes that are beamed together. So the beam itself, I've highlighted red, is this little bit here. That's the bit that attaches these two notes together. Now, it's really important we recognise what type of notes can be beamed together. So we've got two notes here that are beamed together, and a lot of people often assume it's these two types of notes, which you might know as a quarter note or a crotchet. But no, these two types of notes can not and can never be beamed together. What we've actually seen are two of these two notes that have been beamed together, and these are known as quavers or as eighth notes. Now, the reason that they can be beamed together is because they have this little bit, and this is known as a tail or a flag. Any note that has at least one tail or flag has the potential to be beamed to another note. So as I've already said, these are quavers, or you might know them as eighth notes. This note here, a semi-quaver, or you might know it as a sixteenth note, that's got two tails or flags. So because it's got at least one, it has the potential to be beamed with another note. And this one here has got three tails or flags, a demi-semi-quaver or a thirty-second note. It's got at least one tail or flag, so it could also potentially be beamed with another note. So you get the idea. If a note has at least one tail or flag, it has the potential to be beamed with another note or notes. OK, so let's have a look at some beaming in practice. Here is a very common time signature, 2-4, and we've got two notes of the same value at the very beginning of this bar or measure. Now, the correct way to beam these two notes is like this. We can see that we've just added a beam between those two notes that have those tails. Now, let's see what happens if we add another note of the same value and a rest of the same value. Now, this is the correct answer. That final note that we've just added does not get beamed to those first two notes. Now, you might at this point go, well, hang on. There is a tail or a flag on this note. Why can't I put a beam across just here? And this is what it would end up looking like. Well, OK, I'll be honest with you. I have played music where I've seen it written out exactly like this and it's acceptable, but it's not the best practice. And there's a reason for this. The reason is the time signature. Time signatures are really important when it comes to working out what is the correct beaming for a particular bar or measure or for a group of notes. Now, as you can see, we're in two, four, and that means two crotchet notes or two quarter notes per bar or measure. And the key thing about beaming is that we lump or we group or we beam notes together. So it's really clear where the beats of that bar or measure are. So here you can see these first two notes create beat number one and this last note and rest create beat number two. If we were to beam these notes, as I showed you a few moments ago, and as I say, it is acceptable, what would happen is, is that we end up with the beam we've just added, cutting across those main two beats of the bars. You can see here, we've got beat one, but beat two isn't made really clear to the musician. So if you were, for example, playing a piece of unfamiliar music and it's got a fast tempo or speed, it might make it a little tricky to work at where the main beats of the bar are. So it's really important with beaming. We think about the musician and how they're reading the notes and making it really clear for them so they can work out or help them work out where the main beats of the bar are. Let's stick with 2-4 for the moment. And what we'll do, we'll change that final rest into a note of the same value, a quaver or an eighth note. And as we already know, it's worth a half. So how are we going to beam this with the other three notes in that particular bar or measure? Well, one thing we can't do is definitely not do this. This would mean that three of the notes are beamed together and one of them just hangs all by itself. Now, remember what we want to do with beaming is help the musician work at the main beats of the bar. Now, those three that are beamed together, they're worth one and a half and a quaver or an eighth note by itself is worth a half. So we've got this imbalance in the bar. It wouldn't be easy to read. So this is not the correct answer. Instead, 
this would be acceptable. But interestingly, at 2-4, if you've got four eighth notes or four quavers for the complete bar or measure, you can actually beam them all together. And what I'm going to do is put this sort of exception at the very bottom of the screen because we'll come back to that very shortly. Let's have a look at another bar or measure that's full of eighth notes or quavers. However, this time we're in 3-4. And we can, if we want to, beam the notes together exactly like this. Remember, 3-4, the time signature, means three crotchet notes or three quarter notes per bar or measure. And by beaming them this way, it's really clear where beat one, beat two and beat three start. It's also worth bearing in mind, just like two, four, that if you've got a complete bar or measure of eighth notes or quavers, you can actually beam them all together. Either way is correct. But what I will do, like two, four, is put this example at the bottom of the screen because we'll be coming back to it in just a few moments. What is important is that we don't beam notes together like this. You can see that there are two notes beamed to here on the left and then four of them beamed together on the right. That makes it quite complicated to read. You can't also have this whereby you've got four notes beamed together at the beginning and two notes beamed together at the end. This imbalance does make it quite tricky to read and isn't clear to the musician where the main beats of the bar are. So a moment ago I gave you this as one option to beam the notes together where they're all beamed together because the whole bar or measure contains eighth notes or quavers. I also mentioned a moment ago that you can't have an imbalance. So you might at this point be going, well, could I have this? Because we do have this equal spread of beaming on both sides of the bar or measure. Well, I'm afraid the answer is no. Let me explain why. Now remember that 3-4 means three crotchet or quarter notes per bar or measure. And the aim of beaming is to show those beats really clearly. What we've got here are two groups of notes that are beamed together. And that straight away strikes me as a bit odd in 3-4. So let's just put rectangles around each of those groups of beamed notes. And let's count up each of the beats in those particular rectangles. So we've got half add a half, add a half, and it equals one of these notes. And that's the same in the other rectangle as well. Now these notes are dotted crotchets, or you might know them as dotted quarter notes. Whatever you call them, that is not the beat of three, four. Remember three, four is three crotchet or quarter notes per bar or measure. Something is amiss here. Now you might say, well, hang on, I've definitely seen three quaver or eighth notes beam together in music before. And you'd be right, but not in 3-4. Three, 3-4, four. Three, four, you would not expect to see this, but you would in 6-8. And the reason for that is because in 6-8, it's made up of two dotted crotchets or dotted quarter notes per bar or measure. And this type of beaming would be absolutely fine in 6-8. Now we're getting a little bit complicated here. I said at the beginning I want to keep this as the basics. So we're going to just move across from 6-8 for the moment. But I just want to make you aware that it's really important that you're always thinking about the time signature and you're always beaming notes together to emphasise those main beats of the bar. So remember in 3-4 if you've got a complete bar of eighth notes or quavers they can be beamed all together. So let's have a look at 4-4 and we'll add two more quavers or eighth notes at the end of this bar or measure. How are we going to beam these together? Well, you might think that this is the answer. And you might think that because I've just shown you that a full bar or measure in two, four and three, four, we can beam all of the eighth notes or quavers all together. But unfortunately, this is not the case for four, four. This middle part of the beam is not allowed. So this is what a complete bar of quavers or eighth notes in 4-4 four, four would look like. And what I'll do, I'll put that at the bottom of the screen. What we have to pretend with 4-4 four, four is that there is this imaginary bar line in the middle of the bar. And no beaming is allowed to cross that imaginary bar line. So let's just change the note value slightly in this particular bar or measure. This would be absolutely fine. What wouldn't be allowed is this, because that is cutting across this imaginary bar line that sits at the end of beat two and before beat three. Nothing is allowed to beam across that imaginary bar line. So this would be the correct answer. 
Now, I do appreciate that I've just told you that beaming is all about emphasizing the main beats of the bar. And here we've got two groups of beaming that emphasizes beats one and three. There are some quite peculiar rules, some quirks when it comes to beaming. And I'm afraid this is just one of those things that you just need to accept. This is one of the ways that you can beam notes together in 4-4. The important thing to take away here is that imaginary bar line, that nothing, no beaming crosses that imaginary bar line. As I said at the very beginning of this video, this is about the absolute basics of beaming. And I appreciate we've only really looked at quavers or eighth notes. For the moment, many thanks for watching. And if you've got any comments, please do leave them on my YouTube channel or please visit musictheoryvideos.com.